All right, guys. So our next movie is Solomon Kane, Jude. Tell us all about it. Okay. 2009 Solomon Kane, rated R with a runtime of one hour, 44 minutes. This had a budget of $45 million. Vader, what do you think this brought in? Um, I don't even remember. I don't. Okay. So 75, maybe. Okay. Had a budget of $45 million. This movie brought in $19 million. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, so, so here's the thing. When this movie was made, it, you couldn't find it. Huh. You cannot find it. I, I, I had to, I remember waiting patiently back in the day to f try to find some kind of way to watch this movie, whether I was going to download it or whatever. I eventually ended up, I don't remember how I watched it, but I did end up downloading like a bootleg copy of it uh -huh. or something. That was how the first, how I watched this movie the first time. You were excited for it. I was, I really was. Did they show trailers for it? I um, assume. I only, I only online that I can, okay. that I can remember. I remember having a very difficult time getting a hold of this movie at first. And what, what's crazy about this movie is like it took 11 years to make this movie. Mm -hmm. Not to shoot it, but like from the minute that the production company got the rights to the Solomon Kane character yeah. mm -hmm. to the point where they were shooting, it took them 11 years of development hell to basically get this movie going. Well, let me tell you what it's about, and then y'all can discuss. Okay. So. When Solomon's dad tries to send him off to the priesthood, Solomon runs away to begin his life of crime. His dad sells Solomon's soul to the devil somehow, and after years of pirating, looting, and pillaging, he learns his soul is bound to hell and renounces his evil ways, vowing to never kill again, in the hope that this will kill, keep the demons off of his back. When he witnesses a young girl get kidnapped, he swears to rescue her, knowing he'll have to go back on his vow to never kill. He tracks down the girl and her kidnappers to his father's castle, where he must battle the necromanced brother he killed the day his father sold his soul all those years ago. Discuss. Love this movie. Really? I do. I love this movie. Oh my God, movie. I hated it. It was really? so boring. Oh no. I was having the no, hardest no, no. time not falling asleep watching this. This, this. this movie encapsulates everything I want in this kind of a genre of a movie. Tell me it, why. It, it just does. It's 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 dark. It's gloomy. The special effects were amazingly on point. Um, the only this, there's, there's there's not a lot of like boobs in this movie. I don't think there's any, but uh, um, it's just it's a cool story, man. It's just it's it's he's not a barbarian, but he's he's a he's a pirate. He's he's a pirate. And he's a he's a vengeful Puritan. You know he uh, um, just the look, the feel, the the. The, the way this movie was shot, it's dark. You, you know, it, it, if you, you, have, you have to watch this movie in a dark room. So I um, did do that. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't, this movie just, it clicks for me. Asking me why, um, I, I don't really know exactly why. It just, it, it does. It just does. Okay, so. what did you think? Because we haven't discussed it since we watched it. So the character of Solomon Kane is an interesting one. Like, um, basically, he's the Punisher, mm -hmm. right? So, like, th this movie is an origin story for him, but in Robert E. Howard's writings, he's basically a psychopath who believes that he is, um, you know, empowered by God to m mete out righteous justice to what he considers evil. And uh, Robert E. Howard basically wrote him as a complete psychopath, mm -hmm. you know, um, and basically, you know, like he would travel throughout Europe and Africa, um, finding evildoers and basically killing them. And like, that was like his whole thing. And that was kind of like a revolutionary idea at the time that Howard was, was publishing these stories where, you know, you had this Puritan with like the big floppy hat. In fact, he kind of mm -hmm. looks like Van Helsing, kind of, a bit. you know, yeah. from, from, uh, the, um, Van Helsing. Yeah. From the Van Helsing movie. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, what was the actor's name who played it? Uh, Wolverine. Wolverine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so the character, you, you know, like basically he, uh, believes that he's doing God's work and therefore like he's doing evil to kill evil. And there's a certain amount of irony in, in the story. Well, you got to fight fire with fire. Exactly. So, uh, you know, Howard created this very interesting kind of like vigilante style character. Uh, and uh, he was a swashbuckler and all this other stuff. Uh, he walked around with like a, like a voodoo cane that he would like beat people with. He had like uh, a rapier that he would fence with. And he had like two flintlock pistols that he would shoot people with. Uh, but we never, one of the things that made him so interesting was that like, we never knew anything about him other than like what he did. 
And this movie tries to like flesh out, you know, his backstory as to how he became the Solomon Cain mm -hmm. uh, that we all know and love from the Robert E. Howard stories. And this was originally supposed to be the first of a, of a planned trilogy that they wanted to do, but it performed so badly at the box office that the trilogy was unfortunately, That's unfortunate. uh, you know, um, basically dropped. And um, James Purefoy, who plays Solomon Cain in this movie, like he was just coming off of HBO's Rome as Marcus mm -hmm. Anthony, I think. Um, and um, so he was kind of a hot property at the time. And this was like going to be like his breakout leading man role because, you know, he'd been a supporting player in a lot of different stuff. And uh, he I think he did an amazing job in this movie. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, like it just wasn't in the cards for him. And this is also Pete uh, Poswaite's um, last film. Like he was the guy who played the uh, the father of the Puritan family that found him and nursed him back to health. Okay, he's a, he's a recognizable character actor that you'd see in like a lot of different stuff. But unfortunately, uh, he passed away um, in uh, 2011, I think. Okay. So uh, th this was one of his last films, and. Uh, you know, do you I, like come the movie on, though? I, I don't like this movie. Oh, geez. I found it. I found it kind of boring. It's really See, boring. This, I yeah. think I bet you Salty would have liked this movie. <laughs> well, well, he likes bad movies, so yeah, well, probably. Sorry. Okay, I also <laughs> didn't understand the relationship with the young girl because it played very romantic, but she's a child. So even in that end scene where she's like on his chest and he's like caressing it, her hand or her face or whatever. And I was like, are they in love? No, because she I, looks 12. No, I never got that off of that scene. I, what I take is that uh, Solomon Cain has been kicked out of the monastery where he was, where he was uh, re-examining his life and, and the way he was going to live. And they kicked him out because he is on a different path. And he hooks up with this family and they basically adopt him. Yeah, we, we, it's, we should, it's a it's a brother sister kind of thing that he they they had with him. I don't know if they if they did a good job at relaying that, but yeah. they they could they should have like maybe explained how long that he was probably with this family. We, we, we should probably set the the groundwork for this yeah. for the people who yeah, haven't ahead. seen this movie. So basically, Solomon Cain starts this movie. He's the he's the captain of a privateer troop, which is basically mm -hmm. pirates, and they're storming this um, this Muslim like stronghold. To get treasure and he is just a ruthless killer badass like awful person mm -hmm. and when he makes it into the vault he meets this guy who's basically like satan's right hand man and he informs him that uh you know he owns solomon cain's soul and he's there to collect and solomon cain barely escapes and so he seeks refuge in the church and in order to keep from being found by satan's henchmen he has to renounce like all evil and so basically he becomes a puritan he gets his body tattooed with like religious symbols mm -hmm. and stuff like that and he has to give up his violent ways in order to stay off of satan's radar so that he can keep his soul but the people at the church are just kind of like nah bro like you've been here long <laughs> enough you need to go uh, so like after he gave them all their all of his money in exchange for sanctuary they're kicking him out well basically the the head of the the, the church he had a vision he had a vision from god and god said I have different plans for Mr. Mr. Uh, Kane. Uh, Kane, and you need to move him along. So, Technically, he's Lord Kane, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So basically, Solomon Kane starts wandering the earth, much like Kane from Kung Fu, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and uh, and he gets assaulted by a group of traveling bandits, and he can't defend himself because he, you know, if he performs any violent acts, uh, he's going to be back He'll on Satan's radar. Soul. Yeah. And uh, so uh, he is found by this Puritan family who basically nurses him back to health. And he becomes close with them because of their kindness. And then these brigands basically find this family and end up killing the father and the brother and kidnapping the daughter. And so in, uh, with the father's dying breath, he tells Solomon Cain that if he saves his daughter, that his soul will be saved as well yeah, because they're linked. I, I don't mean to interject, but prior to that attack, they, were, they found this witch, the little girl who marked the, little, who marked the other girl oh, yeah. as the whatever... Some kind Special of plot, one. some kind of plot device, yeah. to where she was needed to be sacrificed or something to bring forth, yeah. whatever. And, and so, like after mm -hmm. after the daughter is kidnapped, Solomon Cain now has this new purpose, and mm -hmm. he decides that in order to protect her, he has to turn back to his violent ways to take care of these bad guys. And there's this evil sorcerer called Malachi, who's kind of behind all this. And Malachi's henchman is this like weird mass dude who infects all the, the brigands with like, you know, dark magic to kind of power them up a bit. 
And so Solomon Cain starts tracking these guys down and fighting them and trying to find this girl. And through doing this, he discovers that his father made a pact with the devil and offered up his, Malachi. Uh, yeah, yeah, and offered up his son's souls as payment in, in exchange for you know um, you know all, all this power and, and stuff the, like that. The masked dude that he's been fighting turns out to be his, his brother. brother. That he yes. thought he killed back when he was a kid. Accidentally. Accidentally. And and so like there's all this family drama, there, there's all this stuff and, and Yeah, he's uh, like the mountain. Yeah. Uh, which sort is of. funny yeah. enough because the mountain's actually in this movie along Shut with the hound up. and uh, a few other Game of Thrones people. I did not catch that. Yeah. But uh yeah, so like that's basically the story of this movie and you know, like on paper, it sounds pretty cool. Yeah, that sounds like a dope story. I'd love to see that movie. Um, I didn't see that movie when I watched <laughs> this movie. I, I did. It is a dope story, and I saw exactly that movie when I watched this movie. <laughs> you guys what? are dumb. I feel like you're saying that as though you want to fight. <laughs> I really, I'm not a good fighter. Your, I'm just telling you you're wrong. Your tone is so. screaming, fight me, Jude. <laughs> I would never fight you. Yeah, but um, overall, like, I just, I didn't care about this movie. Like I, I started watching it because, and I was interested in it because mm -hmm. I liked the character. I'm a big Robert E. Howard fan. Um, I love James Purefoy. I think he's a great actor mm -hmm. and nothing about this movie interested me. Like we started watching it and I was just like, I'm so bored. Yeah, I, just I felt the same end. way. You know? Vader, what did you like about this movie? I, so I, much? There's really everything. There's really not a lot I didn't like about this movie. I, I just, I, I mean, I'm, I like... I'm looking at this scene right now where he's fighting the, 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 the devil's henchman dude with the hood and everything. Everything about this scene I like. I like the look of it. I like the aesthetic. I like the special effects. I like the story. I like the actor. Um, I, I, I don't know what else to say. I, I, I like this movie. And I don't really understand why you guys don't like it at least a little bit. It's crazy to me. So, yeah, I don't know what to say. Jude? What made this a hard watch for you? Um, I I didn't get any of the stuff that you love about it, V. Um, everything that you're saying about it sounds like a great story. I don't think that, that any of that was conveyed in the movie. It felt so huh. long and I just felt it I just found it really, really boring. And like the relationships I don't think were were well defined. Like I was pretty confused up until the end on what his relationship to this girl was. Cause it seemed, huh. it kept going back and forth to me, seeming between like him wanting to redeem himself by saving this girl, or he was in love with her or she was in love with him. It was very confusing and not very well defined he, for he me. He was told by her father that if she, if he saves her, his soul will be saved. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's the gist of it. That, I mean, that's it's not that hard to figure out. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> let, let me ask you this, Jude. Do you think you would have liked this movie more if Christopher Lambert had been Solomon Kane? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think it would have still been the same Cause, stupid cause movie. Th that was the guy they were going after originally see, for the I part. I could see that, yeah. This, this to me is when they take a character like this and they take the fucking camp away from the stupid movie and they make a more serious toned yeah. fantastical sword and sorcery movie. Yeah. And that's why I like this movie. Because okay, it's, I think it's, that's it's, why it's, I don't it's, like it's it. It's not campy. I don't have to have fucking camp in my barbarian movies. I'm I'm tired of camp in my barbarian movies. This isn't movies. a barbarian movie. You well, want it's, it's you want some enough. serious boobs? It's close enough. It's 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 a sword and sorcery demons, swords, armor, sword fights, battle axes, ghouls which is Sorcerer's movie. All that shit is in this movie. And it's not campy Okay, at all. well, I think it, for me, that the camp is what makes mm -hmm. the fantastical and crazy and silly elements of sword and sorcery movies mm -hmm. work for me. Like, uh, I mean, I, we've talked about, like, um, the Roger Corman movies and um, the, um, yep. shit, what's that one that we love? Beast, or, uh, Death, Death Stalker. Stalker. Death Stalker. Death Stalker. Yeah. We've talked about those movies yeah, those and, and how remarkable they are in that they're so ridiculous mm -hmm. that everything works. And it's the camp factor that makes rape funny and it makes like pillaging a town right. silly. There, th when, it's, if, when it's this serious, it just doesn't work if, for if me. If there was a rape in this movie, it wouldn't have been funny. No. Not at all. Hell no. And it doesn't always have to be. And that, so. I think starting right from the beginning he's this terrible person and mm -hmm. there's no charm or camp to it which i don't think helped me get on board with him 
throughout his journey. I, I feel like this movie takes itself way too seriously, it's which is one of the serious, problems. Which, is, which was super boring. Which is for probably me. why I like it. But I, I, I think like if if it was going to take itself seriously, the biggest problem with this movie is that it it's not based off of any Robert E. Howard story. Like this is mm -hmm. an origin story. I feel like if this movie was just about like Solomon Kane shows up, he's already a Puritan avenging angel mm -hmm. and he's just trying to save this girl. And we watch him be like a badass, like throughout the entire movie without knowing his backstory and, and have like the magic be a lot more subtle as opposed to like, you know, the, the big CGI vomit fest of demons and like mm -hmm. whatever. Um, I feel like it could have been darker, could have been more serious and it would have been way more interesting um, as it is right now, it's it's like a weird amalgamation of what we saw in Cull, and like a Zack Snyder film. You know, like it's just <laughs> it, it, it's it's very kind of like desaturated and broody, and I don't know, like it's like, not it's, for it's, me. It's dark. It's a dark movie. It, it like, really like, like dark in tone, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I there's there's there's. I remember when I was watching this movie, I was watching it on on Discord with some of our patrons. Um, there's a scene where he's in some crypts and he's fighting some ghouls. It's the first time I've ever seen ghouls actually portrayed correctly as far as your classic like uh, Dungeons and Dragons mm -hmm. style type of ghoul and stuff. And, and, and they were done perfectly. Yeah, I movie. think all of those were done really well. You, you know, there's just they, they got the they got the demons and the ghouls and the monsters and everything correct. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I, I appreciated that in this movie. These demons in this movie are scary. Yeah, they're fucking scary. Yeah, you, you know, uh, with 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 the with the religious upbringing that I had, if I had watched this movie when I was fourteen or thirteen, mm. kind of might have freaked me out a little bit because it was weird. There's some there's some well, uh, deep I'll, shit in this thing. I'll, I'll say this for the movie, like uh, director M J Bassett, mm -hmm. um, you know, he made a good looking movie. Yeah, like like this this movie is really well shot. Um, I I don't have a problem with any of the actors in the movie. All the actors did a, a good job. I just feel like it's the script, it's the story that I have a problem with, mm -hmm. and it, and I just f found the movie incredibly boring and slow. Yeah, and I think I wasn't. It's like I couldn't categorize it. It wasn't, um, it wasn't the typical barbarian movie or pirate movie, which has some camp to it. It also wasn't a horror movie either. Mm -hmm. So, I couldn't figure out, I guess, what kind of a movie it was, and also I found it really dull. Yeah, they, they tried to walk the line between making it a redemption tale and also like an adventure tale and a mm -hmm. supernatural tale and a horror tale. And, uh, it was all those things. For you. Yeah, I, I had no but, issue but, but with it, all But it didn't things. do any of them very well is the problem. Like, it, I, I feel like this movie is just kind of unfocused. And I would have liked to have seen maybe like a little bit more faithfulness to the original source I, material. I can't argue about the faithfulness to the source material. I can't. Because I, I don't know it that well. Okay. But as far as it being all those other things, I have, I, ha I had no issue following this movie. I had none. I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to why you guys think the story is hard to follow, but that's okay. It's not I, hard to follow. Okay. It's just boring. Well, that's your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. <laughs> don't take it personally. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> all right. Let, 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 I'm, let's, let's do final okay. thoughts and ratings. Vader, what, did, oh, what, what would you give us? Man. Um, I'm going to go like three and a half stars. I think I, I, it's, it's, it's a fun movie. I really enjoy it. Um, I could watch this movie probably three or four times a year with no problem, just for fun. Um, is it a movie that is, is that I'm going to care about if I ever watch it again? Probably not, but if I have a chance, it's cool. I'll watch it, you know, and I'll put, take some time out of my life to watch it. And I also am kind of annoyed that it did so poorly. I, I would like to see what the, else they could do with this character because I think it's a fun, cool character. It, it would have been interesting to see yeah. what other two movies they had planned for it mm -hmm. if it had actually gotten to complete what, the trilogy. Here's, here's what this week has done. Um, I know none of these movies are, are that great as far as the source material that they're based on. It's made me want to go actually read Robert okay. E. Howard. You read? I'm, I'm going to read. <laughs> um, I, that's one of my goals for 2022. I want to read a few books. And um, I just, you know, yeah, I just enjoyed this movie. This is this is what happens when you take a more serious take on what's traditionally been a campy subject. And I appreciated it, and I liked it. So I'm going to go three and a half stars, I think. Yeah. All right, Jude, so. what would you give Solomon Kane? and what are your final thoughts? Um... 
for me, this didn't make me angry watching it, but if someone makes me watch it again, I will be angry. <laughs> um, it's about a one and a half packs oh, with the devil on. for me. Um, I, I don't think I have much more to say about it. I, I hate get, you right now. No, I get what you're <laughs> saying about it, and I get why you liked it. No pawn and far for you today. there are $19 million <laughs> that say that there are other people just like you that felt the same way. I don't think this movie stood a chance just the way it was done. I would be down for a reboot of it with the story that you guys just told me, but mm -hmm. that story wasn't told to me with this. Okay. okay. Well, um, for me personally, like I would give this a solid, like two stars, um, you know, technically like it's a very well-made movie. Um, but I just feel like the actual story just wasn't something that I felt, you know, was very intriguing to me. I would have liked it to be more entertaining, I guess is what I would say. Mm -hmm. Or like if, if they were going to go dark, just go super dark, like g give us like this medieval punisher type story, uh, make the character a little bit more mysterious, uh, tone down some of the supernatural aspects. There, there's just a lot to this movie that I feel like were, were misfires, um, at least narrative wise. And uh, it could have been really good. And um, it just, in my opinion, it wasn't. It was just kind of middle of the road, meh. It was very meh yeah. for me. I'm sorry, V. And also I think the fact that we had to watch it with commercials, because the only way to watch it um, was on you could have uh, watched I, it without commercial. IMDb. Um, well, I didn't want to pay for it. <laughs> um, IMDb, uh, the IMDb channel on Amazon, where like they put in commercials like every like five minutes. Oh yeah, like, that it was, was annoying really annoying. Too. Yeah, so that kind of detracted from a little bit of the enjoyment. But overall, like it's it's not a movie I would recommend. But I wouldn't like if someone's like Vader and they're like, oh, this looks cool. I'd be like, yeah, give it a watch. See if you like it. All right, guys. So that was our discussion of Solomon Kane. Next up, we are rounding out Robert E. Howard Week with Conan the Barbarian Momoa Edition. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after a word from these sponsors. 